How's it going, Mr. Bellinger? It's going. I don't know where, but it's going. Daddy, I've arranged the full service for you. You're going to have a massage, a sauna, checkups with the doctor to help you get back in shape. At my age, getting in shape is merely a waste of time. Gosh, you guys have got a strange friendship. No, it's not strange. It's a good friendship. And in a good friendship, you only tell each other the good things. <laughs> Welcome to Kermit Uncut. I'm recording this blog in BAFTA headquarters in London. I'm a member of BAFTA, very proudly so. And as you probably know, coming up to awards season, what happens is that members of organisations like BAFTA or the Academy in America get sent screeners of films, you know, discs, so they can watch the films in advance and then hopefully vote for them for your consideration. This is kind of great because it means you get to see a whole load of movies at your convenience, you know, in the comfort of your own home. However, when those movies then come out in the cinema and it's time to review them properly, I do like, if possible, to see them projected, to see them screened properly, because I do think it makes a difference. And I've been really struck in the last few weeks by three films, which I saw on disc and then saw on a big screen, and how much difference it made. <laughs> My boy, and you took him from me, you understand? Firstly, and most obviously, I saw The Revenant. I watched it over Christmas, had a screening disc of it, and I thought it was fine on the disc. I thought, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio's performance was very good, but I have to say I felt it was mainly a technical exercise. I was more impressed by it than involved with it. And I, I spoke to Nigel Floyd afterwards, who's a great friend of mine. He said, look, you have to see it projected. It's a whole different experience. So I went to see it again in the cinema, and I have to say it was a completely different experience. Suddenly, the film's visceral quality really came alive. I felt like I was involved in the drama. I felt like I was in the middle of that landscape. Emmanuel Lubezki's cinematography really made sense, not in a kind of intellectual way, but in a physical way. So that was a film that was completely transformed by seeing it on the big screen. Then, just a week or so ago, I went to see a screening of The Assassin, which I had loved first time round. I saw it on DVD, because again, it was up for Best Foreign Language Film, and indeed got a nomination at the BAFTAs, not at the Oscars, which tells you a lot about the Oscars. But I loved it when I saw it on the small screen, because it's a, it's a four by three frame for a lot of the time. The frame does breathe, but it has a kind of boxy academy ratio. So I thought there was no problem with watching it on the television, and I loved it. I thought it was visually sumptuous, and it's a martial arts movie, but it's not about action. It's about you know moments which are more interior than exterior. There's an entire sequence in which we watch a whole scene playing out through a sort of gauze silk billowing before the camera. And I thought it was really sumptuous. I didn't quite understand all of the story, so I wanted to go back and see it again. And then I saw it projected, and it was transformed. It was even more impressive. It was even more gorgeous to look at. And you started to notice details that I hadn't seen first time round, not least the way that the frame, as I said, breathes. I just felt that it took it to another level. And I was surprised because I had liked The Assassin so much the first time round. I've just come here from a screening of Youth, which again, I had watched on disc, and you know, liked, I think Paolo Sorrentino, when he's working in the English language, sometimes is a little bit out of his comfort zone. And there are things about Youth that really work well, and things about Youth that don't work quite so well, but once again, seeing it projected, transformed it, this time, partly because of the music. I mean, so much of his films is to do with music, and watching it in a screening room with a big, loud sound system, yes, that added to it. It was also the fact that so much of the film is to do with performance. It's a film about performance, and actually seeing something playing out on a screen enhanced that performance quality. Now, I understand that there are a million reasons for not going to the cinema. People have written to me so often to say, you know, I went to my local multiplex, everyone was talking, everyone was on their phone, the film was in the wrong ratio, it was back to front, it was upside down, it cost me a fortune. I, I would rather just stay at home and watch it in Blu-ray quality on my large big screen television with my stereo sound system that I have set up in my front room. And I understand that completely. I also understand that there are loads of films that you simply can't get to see in the cinema, that actually you might have to watch through a streaming service because they're not playing playing in a cinema near you, and I'm all in favour of that. I mean, believe me, I do think that home viewing is probably not the future, but a future. But just that moment of being in a cinema, yes, with other people who are well behaved, because these are critic screenings, which is a privilege, frankly, but just being in a group of people, the moment when the curtains go back, when the screen lights up, when the lights go down, and the performance starts, 
In all three cases, in all three very different movies, something magical happened. And at the end of the day, it reminds me that I'm still in love with cinema itself. And frankly, at my age, that's really encouraging. You were right. Music is all I understand. And you know why? Because you don't need words and experience to understand it. It just is.